Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a French baguette and this is what it looks like. As you can see, it has that really nice, the classic long thin shape and nice crispy crust. And then inside it's wonderfully soft and chewy. And as you can see, we've got the nice ears here. That's what they're called, these little rough edges, which a baguette has. So to make a baguette, there's a couple different ways. You can do it with a machine, but today we're going to make it just by hand. It's called a hand mix baguette. Really easy, no kneading. So I mean, if you're new to making a baguette, this is a good recipe to start with. So um, in a large bowl, I like one that's pretty wide. Uh, I have, um, okay, first you need a scale. I'm recommending the scale like I always do, but really, when you're measuring flour, you're way more accurate if you use a scale. You, I'm going to give you cups, but really, it's time to buy a scale. So you will need um, 475 grams of bread flour. That's three and two thirds cups. And I'm also using 65 grams, a half a cup of all purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. And you know, the bread flour is what gives us a nice soft and chewy texture. And then, Along with that, we are going to use two grams, which is three quarters of a teaspoon of SAF Gold Instant Yeast. This is a little different than the Active Dry. This is used by professionals and we don't have to proof it, which is really good. And it's, it, this type of yeast is really good when you have a long fermentation period, which we do with a baguette. So. You know, you can find it online, Amazon is where I got mine. So just keep that in mind. And then what we're, another ingredient you may not be familiar with is we're going to add three grams, which is one teaspoon of dry malt diastetic powder. And what that does is yeast needs sugar to feed on and then it releases gases and gives us that wonderful flavor. Um, so. The, uh, this kind of malt powder, powder breaks down the starch into sugar, which is, and this is really good, again, when you have a long fermentation period, and it also helps with browning our baguette, give that wonderful golden brown color. Again, you can get it online, so I'll just put that in there. And then we need some salt for flavor, plus it does tend, salt tends to uh, slow down the fermentation process, which is really good again uh, with this particular recipe. So we're using 10 grams, two and a half teaspoons. I like to use a kosher salt. So just dump that in. And then we're going to give that, I'm just using my hand. You'd use a whisk, mix all that in. And then we need water. Now, like I said, this dough, it's actually, we're going to do the first fermentation is three hours because we are not kneading the dough. So it needs that long fermentation period. And we don't want the dough to be too warm. We want it room temperature. And by room temperature, I mean that's between uh, 74 and 77 uh, Fahrenheit, which is 23, 25 Celsius. So we don't, our water temperature is very important. So I have a formula, it's in the head note, but I'll just give you an example. My room temperature is uh, 77 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 25 C, and that means my flour is at that temperature. So I need a cool temperature of my water. I, actually, I'm doing it at about 68 degrees, 19 C. So um, to get that, you will need an Insta Read thermometer and put in there, or Rick just happened to have in his toolbox this infrared really fancy dance. <laughs> I just beam it on it. Like my, my flower is 76.5. I don't know whether you can see that. We can get a shot of that. Pretty cool. <laughs> kind of fun. You can just put it, you can check the temperature of your oven, your wall, whatever. A lot of fun. Um, so anyways, you will need uh, 380 grams of water at your correct temperature. So that will be, this is again where grams is really good. Um, that would be one and a half cups plus one and a half tablespoons of water. Please get a scale. So um, put a, uh, you want a well in the center 
and we're just going to pour our water in like so. And then we're just going to moisten our flour. I like to use one of these, just one of these plastic scrapers. You could use a wooden spoon. And then I'm just going to move it around like this. Now we are making an authentic French baguette. So I will tell you up front, there is a technique to this and it will take some practice, but this is a craft and a wonderful one. And I just love the process. And it, we're not making like a, just a white bread dough and then, and then just rolling it into a log. We're really going to, um, you know, make it like they do in bakeries. So, and you know what? The results are just wonderful. So enjoy learning this, this it's a craft. I just, I just find it so therapeutic and relaxing. And even if it's not perfect, the results will be like, I find even on my worst day, there's my bread is still better than what I'm getting at my local grocery store. So, so now I've kind of got it moistened as much as, you know, as I can. You find it looks like a lot of water and then it looks like I don't have enough water. You do. So now what we're going to do, we don't want to knead this dough. So I have this kind of, I think it's a bench scraper metal. You could just use a knife. We're not, you don't want to tear the dough. So what you're going to do is just cut down. So you could use a knife for this and then just lift this and stack it. You don't want to pull it. So just work like this, work around. And this, as we keep working this, it's going to moisten, get all that flour moistened. So as you can see here, the, I'm really starting to really clean the bowl of the flour. So I'm kind of dragging it up. So I'm gonna check that in a second here. Okay, so there we go. It's kind of a shaggy mess. Don't worry about it. And I'm just going to check it. That looks good. You want to kind of just feel it, make sure there's no dry spots. Let's look. I'm happy with that. Okay, put that in there. So now what I'm going to do, so we're, we're done making our dough. I know it doesn't really look like a dough, very good one, but trust me, it will. Let's take it out. So I'm just going, I have to wash my bowl. And so I'll do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have my clean bowl. I'm just going to pour a little flavorless oil. I'm actually using canola oil. So vegetable, light olive oil. Now I'm just taking a paper towel and then just lightly oiling the inside. We don't want our dough to stick too much. And then, so I'm just going to take my dough like so, and then I'm going to flip it so that the, the top of the, the dough is oiled. And there, uh, that looks lumpy, kind of shaggy. Don't worry about it. And look, just for, we are at 74 degrees, which is like at the low end of our temperature, which is good, 74, which is what, 23C? So that's good. So now I'm just going to cover it with plastic wrap. And then, like I said, if you don't need your dough a lot, the, the kind of the thing is, if you need your dough a lot, you have a short fermentation period. Conversely, if you don't need your dough, you have a long fermentation period. And as we're going to do it for three hours, and that's going to really develop the flavor of our baguette. But every 45 minutes, we will have to stretch our dough, which I will show you. So what you want to do is just let this sit at room temperature, and I'll see you back here in 45 minutes. Okay, so it's been 45 minutes, so we're going to do what is called our first fold. So, and you know what, just as a little tip, I kind of write everything down, the time, time I made the dough, and then my folds, 
because sometimes you forget what time you did it. So it's good to have a little piece of paper and put that down. So now to fold our dough, what you do is take one end here, just kind of stretch it gently and then fold it over onto itself. Turn it, stretch this, fold it back on itself, this side, and as you can see, this is starting to smooth out. This is what we want, and like that. And then what we're going to do is just flip it over so the bottom becomes the top, and that's what is called our first fold. If I kind of put my thing in there, it's up to 75.5, which is what, about 24? So that's fine because we want to keep that within that range. So now I'm just going to cover. And the reason we do that is to equalize the temperature of our dough. That stretching helps to do that. So I'm just going to cover it. And now we're going to do another 45 minutes and then do what is called our second fold. So we'll see you back then. So it's been 45 minutes, so we're going to do what is called our second fold. Again, gently pull it, fold it on itself, other side, and as I said, this will equalize the temperature of our dough, as you can see, and then we're just going to flip it. It's going to be nice and soft, just how we want it. So again, that's all you do. Cover it, and we let it ferment for another 45 minutes. So now for our third and final fold. Now, this dough looks, I mean, it's nice and soft, but it is sticky. So that is the way it's supposed to be. So again, just gently pull, fold it over itself. Again, flip it like that, and then we are going to cover it and let it sit another 45 minutes, and then we will be ready to start shaping our baguettes. Before we start shaping our baguettes, we need to talk about our oven. And one of the problems home bakers have always had to make an authentic French baguette is we don't have a, a deck oven, which is what artesian bakeries use but we can kind of simulate it and, and get really good results. So um, in the oven, I have actually two pizza stones. I have one at the top here, and I have one at the bottom. I have, if you don't have two, I have done it with just the bottom one, and that is what we're going to put the baguette on, and I get pretty good results. Some people have even just bought unglazed tiles instead of a pizza stone. The problem with that is I've talked to people and they said they do tend to break, so just keep that in mind. So, um, and then you have that, and then, you know, the deck ovens in artesian bakeries, what the great thing of that is you, when you put the baguettes in there, you get this burst of steam, and you need that, so that's what, how you get that really nice, hard, crispy crust. But we also, there is a way to kind of simulate that. And what I've done is I've put a cast iron frying pan in the bottom. And we're going to heat that up with the stones when we heat the oven. And then what we're going to do is we're going to throw in some ice cubes. And that's going to instantly hit that cast iron and we're going to get the steam. So this is kind of my setup that I have. Like I said, if you only have one pizza stone, you can, you can do it with that. So, uh... And the thing is, we want, we have to preheat our oven to 475 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 245 degrees Celsius. And we want those stones to get up to that temperature. And that takes a while. You know, your, your oven may beep and say it's ready, but those stones take a lot longer. I find to really get that up to, to temperature, it takes like an hour and a half. So just keep that in mind when you're timing. And if you have a convection oven, a fan oven, which I do, uh, I like to turn that off. I don't like, I don't have the fan on, so just keep that in mind. 
So when we come back, we will start shaping our baguettes. Okay, so now we're ready to start shaping our baguettes. I like to do this in two stages. Uh, do a little, then let it rest, and then finish shaping. So first thing we need to do is flour our surface, because this is a soft, it's a sticky dough. And then what you want to do is you want the top of the dough to be facing down on your counter, like so. So as you can see, it's really nice and soft. And then flour the top. And then we're going to divide, I don't know what I said, we're going to make three baguettes. So we're going to divide this into thirds. Now, I like my scale, <laughs> you probably know. Uh, you can eyeball this if, if you don't have a scale. So um, I find about 310 grams per baguette. So and you know, try not to tear. You want to just cut down and use a knife if you don't have one of these bench scrapers. And just gather up the dough. Let it kind of go like this because you don't want to stretch it. That's a little much. If you've ever made a baguette dough like with the machine like and knead it, this dough is a little more soft than than um, than a machine made when you knead it. But you know, I think this is a great dough for if you're just starting to make baguettes because you don't have to worry about um, kneading it and you know, the window, do I have that right? And people get confused by that. So I think this is a great way to start. And then we move on to the other ways. And yeah, see if that's about right. Whoop. Okay, that's about right. So now, there's my oven beeping. So, you want to kind of put it into a rectangle. I'm, kind of even and then kind of pat it down because you're going to have some large air bubbles and we just want to get rid of those. So I'm doing it, uh, what's that, maybe six by four inches. So that's, uh, <laughs> let me see, about 16 by 10 centimeters. <laughs> it's not too critical. So what we're going to do to, it's a little bit of technique here, uh, we're going to take your hands like this and then just fold it into the center, kind of seal it, because we're trying to create a little bit of tension here on, on our dough, and that will give us that really nice uh, shape of a baguette that won't spread out when it bakes, so that's why we're doing And then just again, just take this and fold it over and under, and so that's what you've got. And then I'm going to put that underneath, and then I'm just going to take my palms of my hands, and kind of just go like this, rock it back and forth. And we're getting some tension there, and then we're sealing that at the bottom, like so. And that's what you're looking for, not that difficult. And then what we want to do is just have a board or a baking sheet, really, whatever you have. I'm just going to use my wooden board here. And just put that on there, like so. And just do the same thing, just pat it because you want to get rid of, to even out, you want to kind of have an even thickness of your dough, plus to get rid of if there's any of the really large air bubbles, but don't like, <laughs> don't take out your anger on it. And then, like I said, into the center, seal it, and then like that, and then just rock it back and forth. And that's what you're looking for. And same thing with the third one. Okay. If you have any big ones, just pop those little big air bubbles. And then we have it on our board. And then I'm just going to cover it with plastic wrap. And then I'm just going to 
you know, let it relax, our dough relax for about a half hour. And then when we come back, we'll do our final shaping of our baguettes. So now we're ready for our final shaping of our baguettes. So you can see they're nice and soft. They have spread a little. So what I want to do is lift them up and top goes down onto a floured counter. So now I know in, in a bakery, baguettes are really long. At home, we are limited by the size of our oven and the size of our pizza stone. So uh, I'm going to make about 14 inch long baguettes. That's about 35 centimeters. So um, what you will need is a cloth. I, I'm using just a linen tea towel. If you want to do like the bakeries do, they, have, they use a cloth uh, called a couche. You can actually buy them online, but you know, a linen tea towel, clean linen tea towel, just do the same thing. Uh, and I like to lightly flour that so our dough does not stick. So a little bit of technique here, you know, it takes practice. You, you won't get it done, down first time. And don't worry about it because it does, you know, it'll still turn out fantastic. It's just something, it's a craft, it's something to work on. It's kind of fun. So now, what we want to do is just pat our dough down gently, kind of even, get an even shape. And if you have any large air bubbles, we want to get rid of those. Now, um, what we're going to do is fold from the top over a third. And you do, you do this by, I take my left hand and I have my thumb and I just bring, kind of take the dough and lift it over my thumb. And then you can either use your heel of your right hand or just your fingers. I'm going to press down to seal. So just go along, pressing, pressing, pressing. We want to seal, and that gets some tension. And just, you know, a lot of times I just use like so. And then we flip it around, and we're going to do the same thing. Use your thumb and a third again all the way along, like so, seal it, that gets some tension, gives us that nice shape, and then we're going to take again and go all the way over to the end here and seal it. Again, I'm just using, so it's a third, a third, and a half, just remember that. A third, turn the dough, another third, and then a half. And I know you probably can't hear, but there is some air bubbles breaking and then I have it sealed as you can see that's what we want and now what we're going to do is we want to roll it gently to about 14 inches 35 centimeters or however long you know your pizza stone is if you got a bigger one you can do it longer and then just gently roll it out that's I'm I think it's about 14 so what we want to do you can see there's that seam Try to get it, you know, an even shape. So we want seam side up, and you're putting it on the cloth. Kind of have, and what we're going to do is just take the cloth and then to kind of give it a little thing to keep its shape, as because we are going to let it uh, proof a little. So just kind of like that, and then we're going to do it again with the next one. If you don't get it perfect first time, do not worry. Just do it the best you can. Practice makes perfect. So again, third over. Let's pop those air bubbles. Like I said, you can just kind of turn it. Again, third, seal it, and then a half. Quite a bit of air bubbles there, I'm popping. And if you don't, if that's not, just kind of take your fingers and make sure it's nice and sealed. Get the tension there of the nice shape and then just gently roll it. Try to get it as even as possible. Seam side up, right in there. And, you know, and then just again, <laughs> the third one. So that's our final one. It's 
like so. And then I'm just going to cover it and we're just going to let it sit at room temperature. Now, depending on how warm your uh, room is, mine's at about 77 degrees Fahrenheit, 25 degrees C. So I'm, I do about a half hour. If your room's a little cooler, it could be an hour. What you want is when you press your baguette, pre gently press it, it will pop up slowly. So probably about a half an hour and we'll be back and we'll bake our baguettes. So we are now ready to bake our baguettes. I'm using a pizza paddle because we have to transfer the baguettes into the oven. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you could you just turn your uh, a large baking sheet upside down. And then what I did is I just spread some fine cornmeal because that way the, the baguettes will slide a little easier into the uh, off of the board into the oven. You can use semolina for that. So I'm just kind of rub that in okay and now we're going to try a little tricky here transferring the baguettes to the board we want as i if you remember we have the seam side up we want now to put the seam side down on our board i'm using one of these this is actually uh, just a piece of wood to transfer them you know you can use like a cutting board piece of just get a piece of plywood and a little tricky, a little technique. I'm going to lift this up, and what we got to do is kind of flip it back and forth. So I'm going to use, kind of get my, I get the wrong, the wrong side there, get this under, and then I'm going to flip it back, and then flip it onto the board using the cloth, and then you have that seam up, and then transfer it, seam down. That's what you're going to do. So now what we need to do is do those this kind of characteristic slits on the top of our baguettes. You want to try to keep it in that top, like the third of the top of your baguette. I'm using actually using a razor blade. You could use a sharp knife. Some people even use scissors. So what you want to do is, I'm, for this length of baguette, I'm going to do three slashes. And if you can see here, there is a slight overlap. That's what you want. So just kind of, I think three is... Just kind of, kind of, and we want it fairly deep. As you can see, just quick action down. Like I said, you could use a knife for this, and that looks good. So we are ready to transfer these to our, our um, pizza stone in the oven. And you will also need, I have on the side, you will need some ice cubes, about a cup and a half of, of ice cubes, 306, I guess that's what, about 360, just a bunch of ice cubes. And that's going to create that steam. And we need that because we don't want the crust, we want the crust to be really crisp and you need that steam right at the beginning. So let's see if we can do this. <laughs> Try to space, um, <laughs> can't really see me, try to space your baguettes. You don't want them too close together because otherwise the sides will be soft. So leave a little space like so. You can see that. It's about right. And then I'm just going to throw in those ice cubes. <laughs> Try to do that as quickly as you can. I know it's a little difficult. And we're going to bake those at for 25 minutes until we get really nice and golden brown and, and nice and crispy. If you turn one over and kind of tap it, it will be hollow. I mean, normally my oven about 25 minutes. Now, if by any chance you cannot fit all three in there, which sometimes happens, what you can do is kind of retard the, uh, the unbaked, uh, baguettes while your first one is baking just so what you need to do is just put them on a baking sheet and put them in the fridge and then you can bake them off after your first one is done if you have that problem 
So 25 minutes and then we will have a beautiful baguette. our baguettes. Aren't they gorgeous? Beautiful golden brown. Kind of tap them. Oh, a little hot. They're hollow, so that's just what we want. And you know what's great about baguettes? You do a few. They're all, they all look different, kind of, and you can evaluate them. I, you know, nice ears here, some maybe not. And then, so then next time you know whether you should cut, if they're, you don't have good ears, maybe you didn't cut deep enough, or if they're really ragged, maybe you didn't uh, pull your, your razor or your knife fast enough through. So it's kind of fun to just experiment, learn the craft, enjoy it. So now, I know we're smelling the bread. It smells wonderful. And who doesn't like hot bread? Nice, warm from the oven. But please, resist it. Uh, to get the full flavor of your baguette, it has to cool to room temperature. Sorry to say that, but that's what we have to do. So I'm going to let them cool on, like this on a wire rack. It's probably going to take, you know, maybe a couple hours. But when we come back, we will try one. Okay, so now we're ready to cut into our baguette. So I like to use a serrated knife. Some people just like to tear off a chunk. Either way. I don't know whether you could hear that sound. <laughs> that, is, that is so... I love that sound. Oh, so this is the inside of our baguette. As you can see, I mean, it's wonderfully soft. You have the crisp outside crust, the soft interior. And you can see there are fairly large um, air pockets in there. That's because our, the way we made our dough, it was very soft and gassy. And that's why you get this, the holes in the finished product. And... Okay, you don't need to have butter on it. I like it plain, but you know, I like butter too. It's very good if you can, uh, if you have some pesto, that's nice on there too. You can tell I had to chew a lot. <laughs> it is soft. It's chewy in that wonderful crisp outside crust. You know, this is, I, I like making baguettes this way. I mean, you can make, there's so many different ways. You can use a starter like a poolish or a sponge. But you know what, to start out, this is a really easy way to kind of get, get going on making a baguettes. So try it. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Thank you.